Hello everybody. I hope you had a good start into the new year and hopefully you didn't already drop your resolution. Now, since it's been a little while since I actually talked on this channel, I've been uploading only these studies that I do every now and then where I would really like to thank the people that actually watch them because it seems like you kind of like them. So I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep doing them. Well, I would have done them nonetheless, but I'm gonna keep uploading them. Because as you know, getting out some video where I talk all the time, where I have to edit stuff and whatnot all, is kind of time consuming and I'm pretty busy. So again, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated that you guys like these studies. It helps me keep the channel alive at least a little bit. And let's just start with the topic, which would be, drum rolls please, getting into digital art. In this part of it, at least the hardware that you're going to need eventually. And keep in mind that I'm not talking about any kind of sketchy hardware you can buy and then you can't really do anything with it. With all the hardware that I'm going to tell you about, you can become like a real digital artist and make high quality stuff. And because it's the beginning of the year, I feel quite generous and I will even include a basic price estimate of whatever I'm going to be talking about. So first things first, to become a digital artist, you need a computing device, you know, a laptop, a PC, a tablet, whatever you want to call it or whatever you have or whatever you want. And there are many kinds of things that either pull everything you need together into one device or you can just split it up and buy everything that you need separately and then mash it all together and have one big station of work. Now let's just get started with the most common and probably least expensive version of becoming a digital artist. Getting yourself an iPad with an Apple Pencil. Now I know what many of you might think. An iPad is expensive. Apple isn't really known for its budget options. But even a refurbished older iPad that you can get for, I don't know, 200 bucks, maybe 300, is going to do the trick. Additionally to that, you will need an Apple Pencil because you don't want to draw with your hand. That's just, that's not something you do. And that is all the hardware that you need. The iPad is the computing device, the screen, the touch screen, all in one, and the pencil is obviously the means to draw. Also, on the iPad, you can use Procreate, which is a very nice and easy to understand drawing program that will cost you once, I think, $10, and then you have it for all eternity. But enough talk about the software, because that's reserved for part two. Now, not everyone wants to draw on an iPad. For various reasons. Not just because it's an iPad and it's from Apple and Apple should be boycotted or whatever. Some people just feel the iPad is not right for them. They want a bigger screen or they want a different screen. In that case, you can still get an all-in-one computing device. You just need to look out for something like a Surface Studio from Microsoft, I think. These are screens with a computer already integrated and they have touchscreen. You can buy a pen for them and then you have basically a big iPad that runs Windows. They are a good asset because they don't need too much space on your desk. However, most of the time they are not portable like an iPad and required to be installed in place or on a monitor arm. Obviously, being an entire computer in its own and a screen, these things are kind of expensive. Especially vast is the gap between the price and the actual thing that you get. The RAM and processing power of these things is most of the time very limited. So before buying one of these, I recommend doing thorough research if that is really what you want and if it has the stuff that you require. Now the next few things on our list to get started in digital art are quite a lot because now we are going to route of getting a PC, a normal PC or a laptop. And then if you have a PC that doesn't have a monitor, you need to buy an additional monitor and something to draw with. If you've gotten yourself a laptop, that obviously comes with at least one monitor. So you only need to get something to draw on. And here come the creme de la creme for drawing. Drawing tablets. 
tablets specifically and only made to draw on. They come in two basic variations, called screen tablets and pen tablets. The main distinguishing factor between those is that one of them has a screen, I bet you can't guess which one, and the other of them, well it doesn't, it has a pen but the screen tablet also has a pen. If you buy yourself a PC, as in desktop PC, you can also use the screen tablet as your only monitor. Now we have summarized all the things that you can do to get started in digital art. But there is still a lot to discuss even in this hardware sector. So let's start with your personal computer. If you buy a PC or a laptop, what should you look at the most? For laptop users, I would look at the most the battery life, because if you buy a laptop and you will be drawing on the go with it, then the battery life must be incredible. I recommend not drawing on the go with a laptop and simply buying something like an iPad, but if it is the way that you want to go, you should definitely look into the battery or a separate battery pack, because these softwares where you draw on, like Photoshop, they use a lot of energy. If you are a desktop user, I hope you do not take it to go, because these things are not made for that. You also won't have the problem of battery life. The problem that both parties have, though, is what specs are important if you want to draw. And generally saying, a good gaming PC is also a good drawing PC. Obviously it's not the best, but it will do the work. To be more specific about that, drawing programs like Photoshop, they use RAM. You can use either the RAM that you have on your main board or the integrated RAM in your graphics card. Graphics card RAM, so-called VRAM, is most of the time faster. However, the best scenario is that you not only have fast RAM, you also have a lot of RAM. That means having at least 16 gigabytes of RAM available. Luckily, it's 2024 now, and almost every computer and laptop that will come out has probably around 12 gigabytes of RAM. So if you just buy yourself a middle class computer, you should be fine. The processor of your computer or laptop is also quite important. Obviously in Computer 101, you have learned that a faster processor is a better processor. This generally goes for Photoshop and probably most other drawing apps out there too. However, Photoshop makes great use of multiple core processors. So when buying a processor or an entire PC or laptop, be on the lookout for the CPU and what kind of processing core you have. You can use Photoshop with a single core processor no problem. It will just take a few minutes to load in and every now and then it can lag a little behind. Generally speaking, a two core processor is completely fine. The best experience in Photoshop, without spending too much money of course, is having an 8 core processor. I know there are processors with many more cores than 8, but they are vastly more expensive and more cores than 8 doesn't justify the kind of speed that you get in Photoshop. Because every core after 8 will only super slightly make it faster, which doesn't really do anything to your workflow. I for myself started out with a 4 core processor, now I have upgraded to a 16 core, but that doesn't mean my Photoshop runs 4 times faster. Actually, I don't even think it's 2 times faster. All I can say is that it is fast enough that I can have a big piece, you know, a high resolution piece, and draw on it and change stuff, and sometimes I just have to wait a second or two to see what actually is happening which I am completely content with. Now, last but not least, you will need some kind of memory device. A storage device for your work. It is 2024 now, so I will just assume that most people already have a solid state disk. I myself am still back in the 1980s with a regular hard drive. Now, having whether an SSD or an HDD 
will not affect your Photoshop's performance per se, it will affect your Photoshop experience. Because I for myself can say, I will need to wait a solid 10 seconds if I open up a 10 to 20 gigabyte large Photoshop file. I can live with that. I have absolutely no problem waiting these 10 seconds. But if you want to click on your work and you want it to be there instantly, then you will need to get an SSD card. Maybe even one of these newer ones that are even faster than the normal SSDs. And with that said, the hardware lesson of today has concluded. I hope that you take advantage of what you have learned or what you have already known and I have just refreshed your memories. Have a great day and a great year, by the way, and happy drawing.